What's going on guys? Today we're going to learn the simple steps towards creating a double exposure here in Photoshop. So let's get into it. What's going on guys? My name is Brendan from BeWheelCreative.com, home to editing tutorials, camera gear reviews, tricks and tips, all aimed to help you improve your photography and photo editing. Now if you are new to this channel and you love photography or Photoshop, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with more tutorials just like this one. Now if you're wanting to follow along and create the same image that I'm making today, then make sure to download the three images via the link in the description below. So with that, let's get into creating this double exposure effect here in Photoshop. So the first thing that we have to do is of course we need to cut out our person layer here. Now in this case, since there's all the hair in his beard and stuff like that, the best way that we can cut out this photo is using our channels. So clicking on my person layer, going over here to my channels tab, I'm going to click through these different channels and find the one that has the most contrast. Now in this tutorial, I'm not going to be getting in depth about how the channels work, as I did already cover it in a previous tutorial that I'll link down in the description below. Once you have found the channel layer that has the most contrast, we're going to duplicate it. So in this case, it's our blue channel layer. So I'm going to click and drag it down to the new layer icon, and now we'll have a blue copy layer. With that blue copy channel layer selected, we're going to press Command or Control L to bring up our levels. And now we're going to just bring up that contrast so he becomes pretty much black and then the background becomes pretty much white or as white as you can get it at least. But as you'll notice there is some white areas on his face and we'll have to touch that up. So I'm happy with this for now and I'm going to click OK. Now we just need to touch up some of these white areas on his face. So I'm going to grab my brush tool painting with a relatively hard brush at 100% opacity. We're going to be painting black here. So I'm going to just zoom in. I'm going to paint black over this white area around his necklace of course around his cheek, his eyelid, and then also on his lips as well. And then we have a whole bunch that we need to touch up with his forehead. So I'm just going to do a very basic fill in right now and then we can touch it up once we actually can see our image in a moment here. And then you'll notice that we have these little gray areas all around the outside here. So there's a cool trick that we can use. With our brush tool selected, we're going to change its blending mode from normal down here to overlay. And then we're going to change our foreground color to white. And now we can paint with a 100% opacity brush and painting white over those gray areas. It's just going to get rid of all of that, basically anything that isn't black. So all the black will stay selected where all of the white or light gray will get taken care of for us. And now we're ready to make our selection. So I'm going to hold Command or Control, hover and click over our blue copy layer thumbnail here. All our marching ants show up here. I'm going to click on my layers tab and with my person layer selected, I'm just going to add that selection onto a layer mask, then press Command or Control I to invert that layer mask. And now we're seeing exactly what we want to be seeing. In this case, I'm happy with how the selection around his forehead looks, so I'm not going to do any touching up of that right now. But just keep in mind that if the highlights in the forehead got selected out, that now would be the time to add some of that back in. Painting white onto your layer mask, making sure that your brush layer mode is set back to normal. Anyways, now that we have our basic selection here, we are now ready to bring in our first image for the double exposure effect, which is our forest. So going up here to my forest tab, I'm going to grab my move tool, click and drag that forest image over into my other document and drop it in there. I'm going to rename this layer to forest so things don't get confusing. Now the first thing that I want to do is flip this vertically. So with my forest layer selected, I'm going to press command or control T, right click and go down here to flip vertical. Once your layer is flipped vertical, I'm just going to rescale it so it's a little bit larger here and I'll just put it right down there for now and click my little checkbox. Now since I want these trees to go from the trees into a transparent background, I need to cut out the sky. So we're once again going to go into our channels. So with the forest layer selected, going over to our channels tab, we're going to once again go through and find the channel that has the most contrast, which in this case is our red channel. So clicking on our red channel, duplicating it by dragging it down to our new layer icon, we will now have a red copy channel layer. Just like before, we'll press Command or Control L on our red copy, and we're going to add a whole bunch of contrast to those trees, and then we're also going to add a whole bunch of white into the sky, so now Photoshop can make a nice selection of our trees for us. Something like that looks good for me. Click OK, and now we're going to press Command or Control, hover over our red copy layer thumbnail, press on that, we should have our marching ants active here. 
go back to our layers and with our forest layer selected we're going to add a layer mask to that layer and we're going to press command or control i to invert that layer mask and now we have the cutout of our trees going here now since we're on the topic of trees let's just reposition and basically put these in to where we want them in our image so i'm just going to hold alt and shift and drag and shift these trees out a little bit like so and then i'm going to reposition them sort of down near his neck area here something around this looks really nice to me now what you notice is that you can see the cutout of our person showing through underneath. So what we're going to do is just to make the fade going from our person into our trees completely unnoticeable, we are going to mask out this bottom edge of our person. So just to make things easy, I'm going to turn off my forest layer, go to my person layer mask, grabbing my brush tool painting with a normal blending mode at 100% opacity and a nice soft brush, so 0% hardness. I'm just gonna paint black on my layer mask and just mask out those harsh edges so then our trees will be able to softly blend off of our person here. So that looks really nice to me. I'll turn back on my forest layer and now we can no longer see anything sticking out among our trees. So the next thing that we wanna do is confine our trees to our person. So that sounds a little bit complicated, but it's actually very easy. All we have to do is make a selection of our person. So holding command, clicking on our person layer mask, we now have that selection active. With that active selection, we'll press command or control, shift and I to invert that selection. And now clicking on our forest layer mask, painting black with a soft brush, 100% opacity we're just going to mask out all the forest around that selection and since we inverted that selection we're not able to paint anywhere inside of our person here so just taking care not to get rid of any of these trees we're just wanting to get rid of any of those harsh edges and making sure that the trees can find to his shoulders on the outside there So just like that looks great to me. Once you're happy with your selection, press Command or Control D to deselect that. So now our forest is sitting in the general position that we want and we're now ready to bring in our cave. So going up here to my cave layer, I'm going to grab my move tool, click and drag it over here to my person document, drag and drop it in, and I'm going to drag it above my forest layer and I'm just going to rename it to cave. Now I'm just going to put it in a general position up above his head here and of course we want it to once again confine to the parameters of the person's head. So we're going to do the exact same thing, command or control click on our person layer mask and then with our cave layer selected we're going to add that to a layer mask. Now we want to be able to move the cave image separately from the layer mask because right now everything moves together which is not what we want. So all we have to do is click this little chain icon between the layer mask and the thumbnail so it disappears. And now when we click on our image, we can move it independently from its layer mask, so the layer mask will never change. So now we can scale up that cave. So we have a nice overlap between our trees and the cave, and then I might just stretch it out a little and place it in just about this area here. And that looks great for me. So now our image is coming together. We have the contents of our double exposure, but we don't really have that effect going on yet because we can't see any features of our person, only the outline. So that's what we're gonna do in our next step. So now duplicating our person layer, we're gonna press Command or Control J on our person layer and drag this up to the top of our layer stack. And making sure that our layer is not a smart object, we are gonna go up here to Image, Adjustments, and down here to Desaturate. Once your image is black and white like this, we're going to change its blending mode from normal down here to lighten. And now it makes this soft black and white look around our photo. So now you see how the double exposure effect is starting to come into play. Now the next steps that we have to do is start to soften out these harsh edges between the two images that we have in here. So the first thing that I'll do is go to my cave layer mask, grabbing my brush tool, the large soft and black brush, painting on that layer mask, we're just going to mask out that harsh edge so then it just becomes a nice soft gradient. Now since my tree layer, if I turn my cave layer off, since our tree layer is sitting up behind our cave, our cave covers the harsh edge of our tree so I don't have to touch that up. But if you are seeing your trees, make sure to do the same thing by masking out that harsh edge along your trees as well. So now the next thing is I want to dial in how much of the person's face and skin that we're seeing. So I want to see a little bit less of his skin in the trees and then a little bit less up here in the cave as well. So going up here to my person copy, going onto my layer mask, I'm going to grab my brush tool and bring my opacity down to about 40% just so it's nice and subtle. And painting with a soft black brush, I'm just going to mask out some of his skin down below here. 
I want to keep that texture in his neck. I don't mind the necklace so much. And then I'll also just bring my opacity down a little more to 20%. And then I'm just going to paint out a little bit around his forehead and his hair and stuff like that. Making sure that we still are seeing lots of his eyes because that's the, pretty much the most important part is those main features which are the eyes, nose, and mouth. We want to make those really clear. So now that is looking really nice to me. I'm happy with how everything is looking so I'm going to zoom out. And now our double exposure effect is nearly complete. So I just want to make these trees blend a little bit better in these dark areas. So clicking on my forest layer mask, I'm going to grab my brush tool painting with a black brush, a nice soft black brush at about a 30% opacity. I'm just gonna mask out some of those trees and make them a little bit more transparent at the beginning so it just blends a little bit better. Next, we're gonna add a little bit of a color vignette around our photo to make everything come together. So clicking on our background layer, going down here to our layer styles button, we're gonna go up here to solid color to create a color fill layer. Once your color picker opens up, we're gonna go and sample somewhere in the dark areas of these trees here. So something like that looks really good to me. And I'm gonna click okay. Now, obviously this doesn't look super great. So I wanna only have it affecting the outsides. So I'm gonna grab my gradient tool, making sure black is set to my foreground color and my gradient is set to foreground to transparent, which is the second option in here. I'm gonna click okay. And making sure that we're using a radial gradient with our color fill layer mask selected, we're gonna click somewhere in about the middle of his head here and we're going to drag out like so and then it just adds a really nice gradient onto the outside of our photo and that might be a little bit strong for me so I'm just going to bring that fill slider down just a little like so and turning that color fill on and off you notice the huge difference that it makes to help really tie together our photo. So now at this point our double exposure effect is complete and you can go ahead and do some color adjustments onto this image as you wish. Now since color adjustments are such a subjective thing I'm not going to be covering it in today's tutorial I'm just going to leave that in the hands of you guys. But here's how my image ended up turning out. I just desaturated some of the colors played around with the lightness just to make things match a little bit better with that black and white look and make things look a little bit more contemporary. Now if you followed along in this tutorial and you created this image for yourself or something similar, I would love to see how it turned out. So when you upload it to Instagram, make sure to tag me at Burnwills so I can check it out, show you some love, and also I'll be sharing some of my favorite double exposure images created with this tutorial on my story. So if you're wanting to potentially get one of your images shared on my Instagram story, then make sure to tag me when you upload. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, make sure to hit that like button as it really does make a difference and also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more tutorials just like this one. Also, if you're still thirsty for more photography and photo related tutorials, make sure to check out bewillcreative.com where I have a whole bunch of great content waiting there for you to learn about. Now that's all I have for you for today. Again, my name is Brendan from bewillcreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new Photoshop tutorial. See you then.